All right, welcome everybody. So we got another KC2 unboxing. So we'll just jump right into this one. So we have a flyer. I think we saw this one last time. All right, so first up we got our our number two, complimentary number two bit. And then we have these Knipex electrician shears. So these are on sale right now, along with the Cobra pliers. So these are made in Italy, so they're probably a rebranded product. So let's take a quick peek into these. You can always tell something was packaged in Europe because it's e actually easy to open. So they come with this come with this holder, I guess belt clip, and it provides a pretty good pretty good detent in there so it doesn't fall out. I don't know if I've ever seen this. Looks like there's a cover here. Yeah, to protect the uh, the screw. I guess from maybe ingress of dust and dirt getting in there. That's pretty interesting that they put that in there. So yeah, these are electrician shears are mainly for for cutting and stripping wire. I mean you can you can use this as a cable cutter. And obviously you can use the uh, the blades to cut some like really thin thin material or tape is I think the most common use for for this front part but you can also act you can also use these as a wire stripper so yeah we'll have to take a closer look at these nice thick blade here so they're definitely not going to flex when you use it on some harder material you can tell the difference in just the material thickness so the, these Kinebex ones are made for cutting much much thicker material and harder material we got a couple of small things. First thing I picked up is this this Wera uh, wooden handle screwdriver. So I think I'll give this a try because I really do like using the uh, the Philo ones. I've had uh, good success with those wooden screwdrivers. And these are strike these are striking cap screwdrivers. Uh, I don't remember them advertising that. They have the same leather cap here. So what that is is that's uh, Basically, they, I guess they use like a press or something and press a piece of leather on the end there. And that's actually help prevent splintering when you hit this. If this was just wood, it basically would probably, wouldn't last you more than a couple days if you start hitting it every day. So a very, very similar construction in terms of the shaft and end caps, but handles are a lot different. So we'll have to see how I like these. So yeah, we'll have to give that a try. So that's usually what I do with screwdrivers. I buy one of them instead of buying a set. That way if I really don't like the handle style, then you're not really committed uh, to having a whole set of them. And then I also got this, this Vera Owl. So it's a 1427. So the reason I bought this, somebody actually posted on the German tool collectors. They they picked one of these up and they were asking about the finish here on the end. And I noticed in the catalog, the catalog had the same finish of the picture that he posted. You can see it kind of, the end part doesn't have the same finish consistency that you're, that you're used to. On most Vera drivers but I'm kind of thinking that that might have been intentional so that's kind of unusual that may have just been an artifact of the manufacturing process when they went to finish these tips who really knows but it only extends about halfway up and it's not a, it's the, the there's not a burrs or anything to cut yourself or anything on it so we'll have to examine that further we might put it under a microscope to see if we can uh, see anything interesting. A slightly different handle type than I'm used to. It's a hard, this handle type is more of a hard plastic. It's more like the consistency of these Philo red drivers. But it feels, it feels harder than the, the black that's on their normal Vera drivers. One thing they just announced is that they're going to be carrying uh, NWS products now. And I decided to order 
a pair because I got an idea for my, my next showdown involving a particular feature on these pliers. So these are the NWS 138-69-200. So these are side cutters, but you'll notice it has one interesting feature there. It's got a, a moving pivot on that one on this one arm. I don't know the exact science. I'm sure the mechanical engineers can tell you. But it's all it's all in the same fulcrum lever. Uh, you know, the the old the old seesaw thing where you got if you move the seesaw, you could you could fit more people on one end than the other if you move the where it's pivoting. So those look really nice. I'm really liking the finish on those. So if you if you compare it really to these, remember these Irwin ones that are NWS? It's so obvious that Irwin did something to these. I haven't tried to actually remove this coating, whatever that's on there. I may actually take a sample and send it out to a lab to see what that actual coating is because it it doesn't quite seem like paint. So we'll we'll collect a couple of these. Um, there's a couple of different brands that have different approaches to this pivoting joint. They all have a different solution, so we'll try to see which one, which ones I prefer. Same type of deal with that. I picked up these Viha. They're called the Bi Cut Super Cut. So I think these have the same exact type of deal, where they they have a pivoting joint feature. Now the difference is, is this one is not automatic. You actually have to push the button to get it to, to work. And that seems kind of seems kind of finicky already. So these ones are made in Vietnam. So yeah they say 200 percent more power. And this one says 50 it says this one says 50 percent more power. I always forget the uh, but when you have two numbers and you you say one is X percent higher than the other. There's two different uh, formulas you use that have two different meanings. So I'll have to see what they actually mean by 200 percent. But yeah, they got the same cutting capacity as the NWS. So this one says 40 percent less force, but it says 200 percent power on here. Something's not quite adding up there. I'll have to do some research on that. But those look like they uh, they might come in handy, so I'll take a look at those. So there's one more that I know about the Knipex. I think they call it the Twin Force. So the Twin Force ones are by far the most expensive out of these. These these ones were I think both of these were probably under forty dollars. The Twin Force one I think is like eighty dollars. So there must be something in the Twin Force that makes it a lot more expensive. So we'll take a look at that. Alrighty, so we got one final thing. So this is another Knipex product. These are uh, what they call sheet metal nibblers. So we got 9055280, and this one also says made in France. So it's probably a rebranded product, but I don't know. I don't know where this would come from. So I got a project that I'm going to try using these on. I actually need to cut a new cover plate for a motor. And there's some notches that you got to cut out in it. it. And I think it would be easy with to do with this. So it's not going it's not this one. This is a uh, just an extra one I have lying around. So it says you can uh, use this on up to 1.2 millimeter steel. So we'll give it a try on this. This I measure this is one millimeter. So all you should have to do is just get it flat. And then yeah, it makes a little nice little notch in there. It's still stuck in there, but that's what probably what this little plastic thing is for, is to keep it from going up in your eyes. But yeah, I know they make um automatic nibblers 
but those can be really hard to control when you're trying to do you know very simple jobs so maybe this isn't rebranded by Knipex because it has this nice instruction manual with it with all their branding on it so they probably printed this somewhere in Germany and then had it made somewhere else but yeah we'll have to we'll have to see how that does on the uh, one little job that I have for it all right guys well that's going to wrap it up for this one hopefully you guys enjoyed that little unboxing and I'll catch you guys next time